Columns are a required structural element. In this exercise, you will select a column type from the library, modify its properties, save the changes to your work set, and place it in the model using the grid intersections. Set the floor selector to the station ground floor. This will ensure that the columns are placed on the ground floor. Select the structural tab on the ribbon. From the structural elements group, select the steel column tool. The property dialog opens. This dialog is common to almost all the building elements that can be placed in the model. You may want to dock it over the Explorer dialog. From the catalog type, column steel, select the catalog item, main column. Select a section name from the pulldowns. There are libraries of standard structural shapes as well as a tab for creating parametric, round, and rectangular shapes. Now let's set a few data group properties before we place the column. Keep in mind, you do not need to set all the properties now. You will continue to add and edit these properties throughout the design of the building. Since most of the columns in this design will be exposed, let's set the structural finish to painted. Note that the family and part is already defined for this catalog item, and the active family and part was reset when the catalog item was selected. Create a type ID for the columns you will place. Make it C1. This will identify the column type on the drawing and schedules. You may now want to save these changes as a new catalog item within your data set so that you can easily select it and place it again later. From the dialog pull-down, select Save Catalog Item As. Name it C1, Steel Column, and select OK. This new catalog item is saved to your project work set and will only be available when placing columns in this work set. This is now the selected column and should be on the cursor ready for placement. On the placement ribbon, set the placement to middle center or the centroid of the member. This will make the placement point the center of the column. Set the rotation to 90 degrees. Set the place by method to grid and change the length to 9 feet 6 or 3200 millimeters. Turn on automatic coping and set the coping options to any interfering members. Now select all the grid intersections along grid line A, then data point or left click in the view to accept. Nine columns are placed for the support of the platform canopy. Now let's place some columns for the building. With the Place Column dialog still open, select a different section from the standard catalog. Change the item ID to C2. From the pull-down, select Save Catalog Item As and name it C2 Steel Column and then select OK. If necessary, reset the placement options to grid and the length to 9 foot 6 or 3200 millimeters. Now select the grid intersections along grid line B for grid lines 2, 3, 4, and 5, and then data point and left click to accept. Four columns are placed in the model. These columns are on the low side of the building, but we do have a roof slope, so we will change the height for the next set of columns. With the place dialog still open, go to the placement ribbon, 
and change the length to 14 feet or 4,700 millimeters. Now select the grid intersections along column line C for grid lines 2, 3, 4, and 5. Data point left click to accept, and four more columns are placed in the model. So in this session, you have learned how to select a column, set some of its properties, and then save it as a type to your workset library. You have also learned to place a number of columns quickly using the structural grid. In the next session, you will place footings under the columns. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.